right. I appreciate the invitation to be here. Uh, I know quite a few people at Motorola as well as uh, IAT as well. Um, oh, okay. Um, so I'm at Northwestern, and uh, I went here a few different cuts. Um, so I'd like to just uh, offer you initially my thoughts on uh, video analytics and video surveillance then show some examples of the work we've been doing at Northwestern and offer some uh, concluding remarks. Um, I have been directing the image and video processing lab since 85 I joined Northwestern. Uh, there have been a lot of people that graduated and are currently there. And by and large, we are working in the areas mentioned here, the intersection of the areas of multimedia signal processing, communications, computer vision, pattern recognition, machine learning, <laughs> computation imaging and life sciences, quite a few. Um, we deal uh, with a number of um, different projects and uh, research directions. And the main reason I mention them here is that all of them have some relevance to video analytics and video surveillance. Uh, it's, it's, it's a long chain. You need to obtain the data. And uh, very often, you want to pre-process the data, for example, to remove some degradations of the data or perform super resolution to increase the resolution of the data you're going to work with. Uh, problems like segmentation, background subtraction, invisible or infrared are, again, at the core of uh, surveillance and analytics. And of course, object detection, robust collaborative tracking, activity detection, abnormal event detection, I've mentioned to I'll show some examples along these things. Uh, you collect all these big data, you want to be able to summarize it, also index them in an efficient way so that you're able to retrieve useful information for that. Uh, very often, uh, you want to work with multiple modalities, not just video. Uh, some of the work I'll show here, we, we utilize both audio and video to perform uh, speaker recognition, biometrics, that is uh, most of the interest here. Uh, we work with medical and biological images. Uh, work on compression uh, before you, you collect the data in one location, before you transmit it. Um, typically, some compression takes place, and you would like, by and large, to preserve the task specific information, the data um, after compression and transmission. You don't want anything to be lost. And of course, uh, uh, dealing with big data in different uh, domains. So the promise of video surveillance for a number of people is to have computers replace humans. And uh, in an automated fashion, do perform tasks of interest, uh, as well as humans even better, but less expensive and uh, more reliable. And this probably alludes to a real-time operation. Very often, you want to do forensic analysis of the data. You just store them, and then you want to uh, to uh, perform uh, data mining, mining techniques to find useful information. And one might say that the promise is to make everybody safer, healthier, wealthier, and even happier. Um, now, with that promise to replace the humans, um, I don't believe that uh, with what we have, we have accomplished the task. So really, we cannot, in an automated fashion, uh, in, in in most cases, and when uh, challenging cognitive uh, objectives are involved, uh, that humans can be replaced. But I do think that really the objective and the promise should be not to replace humans, but provide technology that could collaborate with, with, with humans, assist the, the human observers um, in, again, detecting the events of interest. Uh, a number of application areas from personal safety, to efficient management of transport networks, protection of critical infrastructure, border control. Uh, this is, uh, of course, healthcare assisted living applications. But also, if we look, talk about just video analytics, it's of interest to analyze any type of video, a basketball game or a soccer game, and put, uh, pull out statistics and things like that. There are a number of, of success stories, uh, and one might uh, I, I, I argue that the massive deployment of cameras is, is part of the success story. One statistic says that in the UK there is one camera per 32 people, and the city uh, has 10 or 20, as was mentioned by the commander, 1,000 cameras. And these systems are you know, well-designed and can handle trillion of events per month. 
right? Um, but by and large, um, what the state of the art can do can can index data, as already mentioned, but also can um, address and answer questions of this form here, like uh, the system uh, through a query mechanism can um, respond to, to requests, uh, for example, showing all the people who entered this facility yesterday, or the people that crossed a particular uh, virtual grid wire, or um, you know, show the blue cars that crossed this street last Sunday for 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. Um, failure quote unquote, uh, everybody probably knows about the LBI net, the, uh, the virtual fence program. Um, the southern border of the, of the country was well funded, but due to high uh, failure rates, uh, was uh, cancelled in 2011. Uh, there was the incident of the London bombings in 2005. Um, huge amounts of data, uh, 90,000 hard drives, six hours of uh, footage, and so on, but no use of analytics was made. Either it was not available, or the ones that were available uh, would be you know, not, not very useful. And of course, we have the Boston events of last week that we'll be talking about uh, at some point. Okay, by and large the challenge is that uh, the state-of-the-art systems have limited cognitive capabilities, and that's a holy grail to replace the cognitive skills of, of, of humans. Um, another challenge is to really transfer the successful technology from the lab to the real world. Uh, there is a, a lot of technology that has been developed and tested in semi-ideal conditions, the ones you see in publications and reports and so on. But there's also another aspect of it, which is that even for the more robust technologies in the labs have not found applications in the real world. Even in cases where um, the, the efficiency and robustness is demonstrated, have not been adopted for various reasons. So the challenge by and large is we have a system that can 24, 7, 52 weeks per year operate under realistic conditions. So uh, illumination changes, there are clouds, shadows, rain, snow, vibrations of the camera, depth of the sensor, and so on. Um, in looking at phase detection, um, it's a challenging problem. It's an unsolved problem. Uh, because uh, you know, you, it's, it's not always a, a phase on shot. That's why, for example, this phase is not detected. It's turning. And then um, you can have uh, occlusions and intention of disguise and so on. Um, detecting humans, that's also a problem that uh, requires additional work because there are huge variations in the visual appearances that you can see here. Uh, for humans, it's a very automated kind of ingrained uh, process to, to, to tell that these are humans, but not so much for the machine. And then after you detect the humans, you want to track them. Um, the occlusions here, the rotations, illumination changes, and so on that I mentioned earlier. Some of the work I want to really briefly mention here and give you a taste of what we are doing is work on uh, video anomaly detection from surveillance video. So there are two examples here, and um, we want to uh, look at events that are not normal. Of course, we don't have any example of abnormal events, therefore, we do want to base the abnormality on the frequency of occurrence. If everybody is doing one thing and one person is doing a different thing uh, just once, then this is an outline that doesn't have the abnormal event. Um, so, for example, this is a video here. Uh, can I play the video? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, please tap on that. No, no, it, it, it's fine to be. No, no. It can, it's embedded. So, just, yeah. Um, so there are humans and cars and so on, so um, the, the, there's a lot of processing that goes into that. You have to detect and track and maintain the identity of the humans and so on. So this shows something that would be normal. If we play this one, then um, you can see that there is an event where uh, a person just goes over this fence. And after the analysis, if you play this video, uh, the trajectories in white are the normal ones, and the one that turns red is the one that automatically was intended to be the normal um, trajectory. Uh, and the normality could be, as this one mentioned here, or if a person makes a U turn while everybody else walks to the up and down the street. Um, here we looked at um, traffic data, 
and we look at different types of abnormality, one, one we call a point, anomaly, just one object, one vehicle doing something instantaneously, or if we look at the longer time interval, then part of the trajectory could be normal and then becomes un abnormal, so the car is here on this lane, and then the little bit of section switches lanes and, and continues. Um, and we also look at of interest, the abnormalities based on the interaction of objects. So each object is doing something normal, but for example, if both these vehicles are heading in the same lane, it becomes abnormal, or if this vehicle tries to turn in front of the other vehicle, and so on. Uh, and this is a video which we put up on either plane that uh, shows, I guess, the abnormalities over here. You know, the car is on the outer kind of lane, waits for a while, and then turns right. So this was flagged as abnormal. Uh, we could play this one as well, for, for example. So, so the bus turns and then should stop there in the middle of the road for a while. And that is flagged as abnormal by the system. And similarly, this one, um, yeah, this is actually the one that changed the lane in the middle of the intersection. OK. Um, it's done work also in, uh, in, in recognizing uh, activities. This is an example of a database. If you look at the from this guy here, uh, in the play, this is a person boxing. Uh, on this block, there's a person walking. So there are specific activities, walking, jogging, running, boxing, hand waving, and so on in this particular database. Uh, in this database, we put out uh, action sets from the UQ. And um, we applied the uh, machine learning and classification techniques um, to classify these activities. So the performance in this set was between 80 and 95 percent. So the activities that look very similar, walking and jogging, uh, there is some, some confusion in the classification. Um, we're also working with um, large data, millions of images, still images, and so on, um, in trying to um, to, to, to plan to launch a, uh, a system whereby uh, you walk around with your cell phone as an example and you see a building, you don't know what the building is, you snap a picture, it is sent into um, a central server, and what we get back is information about this building. Or you can do that with um, uh, CD covers or book covers and so on. So this is, uh, the, the challenge here is how to um, to, to pull out the appropriate features that are robust and, and light, how to index this huge database and how to perform um, uh, efficiently retrieval of the data. Um, we've looked at uh, fusing the modalities of audio and video, and uh, we've looked, for example, at uh, biometrics, either you know, the recognition, either identification of a person or verification of a person. Um, we looked at a specific database here, and by and large, um, the, the idea goes that if one modality is noisy, we have a lot of noise on the, on the uh, speech data, then you can get uh, complementary information from the video data. So the performance of the system in identifying, for example, went from 50% if the speech is, has 0 dB noise to 92% um, uh, if you would like the video. We also um, applied similar technology to the problem of uh, detecting facial expressions. There are face six of them here, not maybe the, the most beautiful ones. And then you want to build uh, classifiers based on video data. We use the so-called facial animation parameters, uh, parameters around the mouth and the eyes and, um, and, and the nose. And um, the system can, uh, with this specific database, has a 90% uh, recognition performance. So, in, in concluding, um, there, there's been a tremendous progress by and large, but still the achieving performance that matches human cognition is, is the holy grail, and that's something that uh, I don't foresee in, in the near future uh, if, if these are very complicated uh, cognition uh, tasks. So, um, in, in the future, Present future, you you you, you see um, not just one camera. I mean, it's already happening, but distributed network infrastructures with greater robustness and adaptation of the vision algorithms is an important one. And as already mentioned, you want 
these systems to operate continuously under uh, normal uh, conditions. Now, um, the systems might find applications to, to, to form as well. Of course, the privacy issues is a big hurdle there, but uh, if this is to be overcome, then potentially one can have a smart home with uh, you know, surveillance cameras that will recognize uh, the household, the monitor activities, provide services. And things like that. So these are these are my thoughts for the time being. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Ivos. Uh,